Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now a slightly different video today. We are still talking bikes, as you can see, the CRF 250 behind me, but we're also talking photography, as you can see, the flashes behind me. And that's because I'm also a semi-professional photographer. And so I wanted to give you three tips today to up your photography game when you're out on your adventures, capturing memories of your motorbikes. So let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the tips, I just want to talk about kit real quick, because obviously today with me, I've got a full professional DSLR body, but you don't need this kit. Providing you've got a mobile phone or a little point and click camera, if you follow the three simple procedures that I'm going to give you, you should be able to capture some really cool memories of your adventures with your motorcycles. Okay, so tip number one, and you think I'm gonna talk about composition, but I'm not. I'm gonna talk all about light, because photography literally means light writing. So it's all about the light. Now today, I've come out with speed lights and light modifiers, but again, you don't need all of that equipment. What you do need, however, is to use the natural light to your advantage. On a day like this, where it's a bit overcast, the light can look quite flat, and we need some contrasting lights, some brights and some shadows, because light gives us depth in an image. So if I was out on a day like this, I'd have a light or a torch, somebody with a phone maybe, shining light on the bike, just to give it that pop away from the background. Now, of course, if you haven't got a light source to hand, we've always got one massive light source up in the sky, the sun. So wait until you've got some shadow and some brighter light in between you. If you've got the sun and it's just there behind some clouds with me today, Always turn the bike on so the sun's on the bike. You want your subject to be lit correctly. So using the light correctly is where it's all about. Likewise, if you want your background to look a little bit more dynamic, look for the light to be shining differently on the background rather than the composition. We can always think about composition of backgrounds first, but actually that's a little bit harder to control. When we see a nice sunlight or a nice dappled shadow, we can exploit that before we exploit anything else. So tip number one, always think about your light. We'll have the bike here, and we're gonna sit you on that wall, mate, and then we'll position the lights accordingly. Okay, so tip number two, and that is take a picture about the subject, not of the subject. What on earth do I mean by that? Well, you can see the issue here. We've got Jamie sitting down by his bike. Now, it'll be easy just to document that. It would be easy just to have Jamie next to the bike, the bike next to a wall. Cheers. It doesn't really say much. It might look quite nice. But if we can convey a story or a feeling with that image, all the better. Now. A photo can have a story. It can have a beginning, a middle, and an end. The beginning is you looking straight at the image and wondering, oh, I wonder where they are. And then the middle could be, oh, I see they've been on a journey, Jamie stopped for a cup of tea, and he's on his motorbike. And then the end in your mind is, I wonder where he's going to go to after this. And that can all happen in a blink of an eye. So try to take a picture about the subject and not take a picture of the subject. Okay, you might be wondering what's the difference between taking a picture of and taking a picture about the image. Well, predominantly, it comes in this, the environment and the background. If I want to take a picture about something, I want to include as much of this as possible because it helps tell that story. If I want to take a picture of something, 
Maybe I'll get slightly closer up to the bike. Maybe I'll even take some detailed pictures of the bike, like in a macro style. Because actually I just want to document the actual subject there. I don't want to tell a story or convey a feeling about it. So there's a subtle difference, but it's quite clear and you'll know when you've hit it. Maybe you've positioned the bike just going down the lane. Well, that would be a picture about the bike because now you're including the bike looking down the lane and you're thinking in your mind, that's where the rider's gonna go. But likewise, I could point the bike down the lane, get up relatively close to it, blur the background out, in which case it would be a picture of the bike because now we're only looking at the bike and we're not taking in the background. Number three, guys, is try to capture the bike from a different perspective. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean different heights, different angles, and different viewpoints of the actual machine. Everybody sees a bike from eye level. So if you're just capturing your photos from eye level, they're not gonna stand out from the crowd. Try to crouch down. Try to see the bike from different perspectives. Nobody ever just takes a photo of the engine, but actually just try to see a different viewpoint of the motorcycle is really important if you want to try and say something different. Likewise, if you want to document your surroundings, then take it from my point of view, because that's where most people will anticipate seeing it from. So you've got to think what style of shot you want. Do you want something more artistic or do you want something that more documents your viewpoint? I'd say if you're taking it from a bike, take it from a different viewpoint. Try take it from different angles, try look at the bike like you've never looked at it before. Something weird about that, but there's also something quite fun. So there we have it guys, a slightly different video today, but one that I hope you've enjoyed. Go out and capture your adventures like you've never captured them before. You can also follow us on Instagram, so I'm going to start putting these up on Instagram a little bit more, but I'll also put these photos just after the video so you can see them all as they were shot. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, do all the good stuff and uh, we'll see you next Friday. Until then, bye-bye.